Hello floss tube. Um, this is my very first floss tube and I'm calling it Mermania um, and you'll see why in a little bit. Um, my name is Deb or Debra. Uh, I go by Science Knitster on Instagram, Ravelry, Twitter. Um, I do have a Facebook account but that's private uh, but I'll put all the info um, in the description um, part below this um, and I need to stop saying um but anyway, I'm a little bit nervous um, doing this, but I've been thinking about this for a couple of weeks and I've been really enjoying um, seeing everyone's, what they're doing, their whips, their stash dives, all the things that have been happening since m many of us have been in quarantine or are at least um, shelter in place. And so I thought, well, I could do that. Maybe not as souped up as what some folks are doing, but um I can do something simple and so that's what I wanted to do today. Um, I'm into all kinds of needlework and fiber fiber related things um, but today I'm going to just talk about cross stitch. Um, next time you see some yarn up there next time I might talk about some knitting. I do have um, some haul that isn't cross stitch related so I'll get to that in a little bit. So first um, I just want to talk about a few things that I've been working on in the past week or so. Um, first up, I've been participating in, in Bendy Stitchies, um, and I, I don't remember who actually got this started, but I saw it on Bendy Stitchy, this, um, Fox in a Dress Stitch Along. So this is, pattern is Light by Barbara Anna Designs, and I've really fallen in love with her stuff. I should say, I've been stitching since I was about six or seven years old when my grandmother taught me. Um, I've been mainly knitting the last, I would say, five, year, ten years. Um, more knitting than stitching, but I kept stitching. And um, I've just gotten really back into cross-stitch the, la the last few months, like since, since December. And it's amazing what, what new things are out there. And um, Barbara Anna is one of the new things for me. And um, I'm really enjoying stitching this. So let me show you what I'm actually doing. So I just got some fabric out of my stash. And this is um, gingerbread. 32 count gingerbread. I am not sure if this is weak dye works, picture this plus, where it came from. It was in my stash. It's been there for probably at least 10 years. Maybe, maybe not quite that long, but close to it. I'm using the called for threads except for the, the vine and leaves. Um, I'm a biologist um, and I just couldn't do blue leaves do it. So um, I'm using 500 and 501. Uh, 500 DMC 500 is the dark one and the lighter green is 501. Um, so there are some mistakes in this. <laughs> the tail and the bustle of the dress are kind of messed up. I kept writing notes like don't come from here. Um, and, and I kind of messed up down here. But you know, it's mine. It doesn't matter, right? If I'm happy with it, that's all that really matters right now. So there it is. This has been, um, as you'll see, this inspired me to some other Barbara Anna things. Okay, and then <clears throat> the big project I'm working on and I'm embarrassed to say that I haven't gotten very far um, is Kringles. This was a Nashville release by, I need to put it. I can read things. Um, this is Little House Needleworks Kringles. Isn't that gorgeous? Uh, the pattern calls for 32 count, but I didn't want something that big. I'm planning to make a quilted wall hanging out of it eventually. So I decided to do it on 40 count. So this is 40 count, picture this plus sterling. And so that's all I've gotten done just to start on the roof. This is my first time, I believe, at least the first time I recall stitching on 40 count. And 
And I really want to thank um, all you youngsters out there that are stitching on these fine count linens. You inspired me. Um, 32 count, way back when, 32 count was my favorite. Um, I would put like everything on 32 count. But then as my eyes started to go, um, I got larger and larger. And basically I was pretty much mainly stitching on 18 count, especially for things that needed to, to travel to... Uh, EGA chapter meetings and things like that. And so uh, I started watching some of the floss tube lately and um, I think it was Nicole Needlework, Nicole's Needleworks um, recommended some magnifying glasses and I'm stitching on fine linens again and enjoying it a lot. Um, I used to only stitch in a hoop on a stand usually and uh, but now I've tried stitching in hand, and at least for things where there's big blocks of uh, one color, uh, I'm really enjoying stitching in hand also. I kind of go back and forth. So those are um, whips that I've had going for at least a few weeks, and I st I'm still actively working on. This week, I started, in the last week, I started several new things. I've been starting all the things lately. I don't know what's going on. I've always had a lot of whips, but this is ridiculous. I'm keeping, I'm keeping my local needle workshop single-handedly going. No, just kidding. It's not that bad. Um, a lot of things I was able to kit up for my stash. So, what did I start this week? First, I started, actually I'm not sure which order I started these in, but that's okay. Um, this is Lindy Stitchy's Merry Manatees. And originally I was going to save this for my Stitch, Stitch Sania. Um, that, that Lindy Stitchy suggested Stitch Sania. And that, that sounded better to me than starting something new every day. Um, I was going to save this for my Stitch Sania because manatees are thought to be the inspiration for mermaids. And as you'll see, my Stitch Senia is all about mermaids. And I need to thank um, Stitching with Reese for that. It's all her fault, but it's great. Anyway, I decided I couldn't wait and I had too many mermaids anyway. So I started this last weekend and I'm really enjoying it. Um, I'm working from home. So, um, and usually I'm pretty busy most of the day. I try to make myself take some a lunchtime break, but oftentimes this, that doesn't happen. So I haven't gotten as far as I wanted, but I've made some progress on the big manatee's tail. Um, let me see here. Let me, oh, I can use this one. This might work a little better so you can see. So that's the big manatee's tail that I'm working on. Um, and what might not be apparent is that, and I'm using the called for threads. Um, what might not be apparent is that I'm actually stitching the manatee's tail up and down to get the same kind of stripey effect that I saw in her picture because I really liked that. Um, I am using the called for threads, but I, um, I'm not using the called for fabric because that's not what I had in my stash and I didn't want to wait. This is, picture this plus, but it is 28 count instead of 32 count, and it is aerial instead of sterling. But um, I still like it, you know, because water's kind of blue. Although I would say the water that manatees live in, having been diving in some of it, or at least snorkeling in some of it, is more green than blue, but that's okay. So that's Mary Manatees. The other start I had this week is the latest little gem from Hands Across the Sea Samplers. Uh, if you like samplers and you haven't uh, tuned into Hands Across the Sea, Nicola Parkman, please watch her, her YouTube, her floss tube. Um, great information. Um, so this, they're doing these little gems that they're releasing as PDF downloads from their website. And um, I saw this one. I just loved the colors. I don't know. Um, this is the third of, there's four that have been released. I've bought three of them and, and I, I love them all. But for some reason, I just couldn't wait to start this one. Had to start it. So um, 
I did start it this past week. And I am stitching it with DMCs because number one, I didn't want, want to wait. And number two, at least right now, I just can't afford the um, Ford Silk. Um, so this is how much I've done. This is um, Picture This Plus 28 Count Legacy, which is why I'm right up against against it here, against the edge, um, so I could get the whole sampler on. I'm planning to finish this as a little wall hanging anyway, so I don't need a lot of extra space along the edges. Um, this, will, this will get me my more than my quarter inch seam that I need. Um, and then I realized um, the other night, I actually made a mistake right here, um, that there should be an extra stitch there for the base of the flower. And I haven't decided if I'm gonna fix it or not yet. I'm just gonna keep going and make a decision later. Um, and just so you can see all, I think I'm missing a couple of colors here, but you can see these, I, I just love how these colors, um, this is Legacy, picture this plus Legacy, 28 count. Um, and I, I followed the recommendations um, that are in the pattern for or the chart for what type or what colors of linen would work. Um, they always seem to give um, a recommendation based on DMC colors so you can actually look and compare, which is great if you're buying from home or you're, you're buying, you're um, kidding up from your stash. Okay, so I have one more start that I started yesterday to start my Stitch Sania, my version of Stitch Mania, which I'm calling Mermania because it's all about mermaids. So last night I started Barbara Anna Designs flowers from the sea. Is that not gorgeous? I just love the colors. So um, I, I bought this from 123 Stitch uh, a few weeks ago. Um, it, it took a while to come. I had to be patient. But I just I just love the colors. I haven't gotten very far. Um, I have to admit, I fell asleep over my stitching last night. I did get a little couple more rows in this morning. So all, all I've gotten stitched so far is part of the hair on the mermaid. But um, I just I just love the color. So I will probably mainly work on this this weekend. Um, I usually try to work on a sampler on Sunday, so I might work on, on um, the little gem. And I forgot to say the name. It's Mary Eliza McMillan. Um, so... I may work on that tomorrow, but maybe not. This is, I just want to see more of this appear, get some of the blue in there. So I got the red and the orangey red and the blue, the red orange, whatever, whatever color that is. I'm just, I'm just loving those colors. So this is my first start. This is my first start for Stitch Senia, my Mermania Stitch Senia. Uh, I'm going to make a new start. I'm going to try to do it Friday night. It all depends on you know, how work is going. I may have to delay that till Saturday morning, but the, the plan is um, each weekend I'll have a new start. Now I know Lindy Stitches is, is, do, or Lindy Stitches is doing a, her, her version of Stitch Sania is that you work on a whip during the week and you have a goal and if you reach the goal then you can have a start. I have enough stress from work right now I don't need the added stress, putting added stress on myself. I do that well enough in other situations. Don't need to do that with my stitching. So if I feel like working on whips during the week, I will. If I don't, I won't. I'll just keep working on my, my latest start. And then my, like I said, my plan is to have a new start every Friday. And each one of these is a mermaid or there's a, I should say, has a mermaid in it. So, uh, my next um, Stitch Sania start, well, this is the plan, and it's all going to depend on how I feel. If I change my mind, I will change my mind. 
like I said, I don't want to add any stress to this. It's all going to be about what I feel like working on. Um, and honestly, if I decide I don't want to start something new, I'm not going to. It's my Stitch Mania, right? I can do whatever I want. So, recently, I've been trying to reorganize my stash just... Well, number one, I started using the X-Stitch app, and so I want to get everything into that. So I have a catalog of what I have, because I can tell you, this next one, Shores of Hawk Run Hollow. And you're like, but you said mermaids. Yes, I did. Where is she? Right here. This black has a mermaid, so this works. And I've been wanting to... I, I fell in love with this when it came out. When did it come out? I forget when this came out. A long time ago. A while ago. Let's just say a while ago. It came out a while ago. And I even bought the fabric. So this, this should have been my first stitching on 40 count. Did I start it? No. Turns out I actually bought two copies of this. I loved it so much. <laughs> so I need to organize myself so I don't do that again. Um, and I'm sure um, as I go through some other things, I will find that it's not the only time I've done Actually, I know it's not the only time I've done it. There, Let's just say there's some uh, Rizzy Kates that I definitely own more than one of. So I, I kitted this up mainly from Stash. I did have to buy some of the DMCs, but you can see, um, again, I'm using the DMC conversion rather than the silks. That's just a lot of silk. Um, and again, for this one, I'm planning to make a quilted wall hanging out of it. And I just couldn't see spending all the money on the silk for something that's not going to be protected by glass. So um, I'm happy to stitch it up with the DMCs. I make, I'm in the process of making my own little um, drops to, to put these on. So that's my plan is for to start this one next Friday. We'll see if I actually do that because I could get distracted by one of my other mermaids. So then the week after that, another stash dive revealed one of my favorite designers that is no longer designing the Bright Needle team, no longer designing. This is Under the Sea. I'm going to stitch it over two. Um, so I went ahead and kitted this up. I had some of the, it's, it's calls for a, a big um, list, a lot of DMC. They actually called for Anchor also, but I, I'm subbing the DMCs, but I am using the call for Gentle Arts, Weeks Dye Works, Krynic uh, Milk Paint, and the Krynic Blending Filament, which uh, some of those I had to order. Um, I could not find the called for linen, which is R and R Reproductions Americana Blend, thirty-two count. Uh, I just I couldn't find it. Um, I um, so, uh, and I think I can't remember if I asked my local. I think I did ask my local shop to look for it, and she couldn't find it either. So I had ordered um, a couple of different sort of blue green aqua -y linens 32 count linens for uh, another Barbara Anna design I'm contemplating doing later um, but it's all kitted up so I can start it whenever I feel like um, it's another animal in a dress but I'll talk about that another time um, so I <clears throat> I got this one let's see that one it's showing a little bluer than it is in real life on on my iPad but um, anyway I did I bought two different ones because um, she didn't specify a color and so I just picked something a couple of things from one two three stitch that looked close and I decided the other one looked closer so I'm um, I'm going with this one which is sea lily 32 count sea lily um, and this piece is big enough fortunately and here are the threads, so you can see. Um, so I think that will look good. I, I might need, we'll see how this one stitches up. I might need to darken or lighten this one depending. So 
So that would be start number three, unless I decide to do it as number two instead. I've been wanting to stitch this one for the longest time. I, I just got, I got, got lost in my stash and I was knitting more than stitching there for the longest time. Um, so then the next start planned is this, um, this is a set, it's a, a strawberry and this medallion. I wanna do the medallion. Um, this is by Erica Michaels. It is Mermaid Berry from her uh, Silkberry collection. It is meant to be stitched on 40 count gauze. And I may at some time do that, but I'm just not feeling it right now. Um, you'd have to do it in tent stitch or basket weave and I know how to do that. I also needle point, but it, let's just say it's not my favorite sti needle point stitch. I'm just not enthusiastic about the whole idea. So I'm gonna go with a suggestion my friend Susan4057 on Instagram made when we FaceTimed last weekend. Why don't you just stitch it on 40 count linen? Like, duh. So uh, I have all the threads. Um, so here are, here are the threads. So I'm gonna go ahead and um, I may stitch it. Um, I'm waiting for some 40 count to come from my local needle, needlework store, which should arrive tomorrow. She shipped it out yesterday and she's like 30 minute drive away, so not very far. Um, I may use that or because it's a neutral or um, there's another linen that I'll show in a minute that I might use part of my haul for the last week or so. Also from my LNS. When she started, when she opened up at least for shipping, I started ordering from her instead. Okay, so that would be start number four. And there's five Fridays in May. So I'm planning a fifth. And this actually would, well, it, this one will move up <clears throat> if the linen comes in. I've ordered the linen from Stony Creek. It, this is the mermaid frock tour by plum street samplers when i saw this i was like i have to have that i don't remember i think i saw it on a floss tube and then i was like oh, i gotta have that one again it's just the colors i love mermaids can you tell i love mermaids i have a lot of mermaids most most of those were already in my stash that i had so the barbara anna is new and this one's new all the other ones no i, I tell a lie there was one there's one more i'm gonna show that um that I bought, but so, um, so I'm waiting for the linen to come in. It's 36 count sea fog by r, &R Reproductions. I owed, I found it on Stony Creek site and hopefully that will arrive before the end of the month. If not, there's a couple I'm gonna show, well, three or four more I'm gonna show that could replace this if necessary for the fifth start. If the linen comes in like next week, this is moving up, okay. Not waiting on this one. Okay. So if the linen doesn't come in in May, because you know things are taking some time, I do have four other possibilities for a replacement. Two of them are more possible than the other two. Um, let me just get myself organized here. This recording is going on much longer than I expected. I thought it'd be like 10 minutes. Um, so this is another under the sea, but this is Bent Creek. And again, this has been in my stash for the longest time. I just think it's cute. It's just very, very cute. Um, I kitted it up mainly from my stash. I did have to order a few threads, so I'm not going to hold it up because I'm still waiting for a couple of those threads to come in. And, um, I had this linen in my stash. I do not know what color it is. All I know is it's 32 count. You know, it's a, it's a neutral, um, so it's um, Belfast linen. I don't know what color. It's Weigert, obviously, but other than that, I'm not sure. Um, it was in my stash with no, no identifying marks. I figured out it was 32 count and Weigert, and that's about all I was able to figure out. Okay, so that would be possible sub number one if 
the linen for the mermaid frock fur doesn't come in. Uh, so it's, and, and that's one of the ones that is really possible. And then the other one um, that's, that's really possible is a, a recent acquisition. Um, I bought this from um, Heartstring Samplery Beth Twist website as a download. This is M is for Mermaid. So that's another possibility if um, the plum, the linen for Plum Street doesn't come in. Um, I don't have any linen or anything in here yet. I would probably use the same linen that I um, am thinking about for the Bent Creek Under the Sea, but I'm expecting my first club shipment from Victorian Motto, um, and it's a 32 count neutral. So I want to see what that's going to be. I might use that instead. Um, and then here's another mermaid I had in my stash. This is one of the um, a Silver Needle Secret Needle Night. Um, I did belong to the, uh, the auto ship one year. Let me take that out of the plastic. It's a little hard to see. Um, but I was no longer on the auto ship. Um, when I bought this one, it was just one that I saw and was like, oh, I want that one because it's mermaids and it's sea, beach. So there's there's only an outside chance um, that one will happen. It might just like if I end up saying like, you know what, too much, small count, I need something big. I might, I might change my mind. Unlikely, but it could happen. And then the final option for mermaids was, and again, this was deep stash dive. This is, um, oh shoot, ah, Teresa Lehman Designs, um, a fishtail. And it's, I don't, these came out a while ago. I don't know if she's still releasing these kind of things or not. It's all French knots. So it's basically a mini version of punch needle, but with French knots. Um, and this is a little kit that comes with uh, the fat, the design already printed on the fabric, which, ah, here it is. So it's teeny tiny. And, and again, I love the mermaid, I love the colors. I don't know why I never started it, but I decided I just wasn't, I wasn't into a bunch of French knots right now. I have no problem with French knots. I, you know, I said I've been stitching since I was six or seven. My grandmother taught me embroidery. That was the first type of stitching I did. I can do French knots, not a problem. It's just, I don't know, for, for some reason, this isn't floating my boat right now. So I decided to stick with more cross stitch. So, so that was my, my thought process and my choices, my options for my Mermania Stitch Sania. Um, I hope you enjoyed that. Um, I did want to show, let's see, what else was I going to show? There was one other thing I was going to show, and I don't remember what it was, so that's okay. Um, oh, yes. Haul. Oh, it's over here. <laughs> okay, some of the things that I have purchased recently. Mostly it's been threads to, kit, to finish kitting things up that I didn't have everything I needed for my stash. Um, but I have been buying some linens. You you saw one of them. Um, and I forgot to get out the other one. So we're, we're not showing that one. It's the, the other Aquae one. This is the a 40 count linen that I, um, that I got from my local needlework store that I was thinking about for the Mermaid Frock Tour. And then I decided that no, I, I don't think... I'm going to use it for that, but I still like it and I like the color. It's just a very pale, um, sort of a uh, lavendery blue. Um, so I may use it for that medallion that's supposed to go on gauze. That's what I'm thinking about using it for. And then another piece of fabric that I got recently in the last week or so from my LNS. Oh, and I should have mentioned my LNS is Judy Stitchery Nook. Shout out to Judy Brady. Hey, Judy. Um, you, you make sure you stay safe because we want you around for a, quite a bit longer. Um, but so she's um, doing curbside pickup now. 
She's in Harlingen, Texas, Judy Stitcherinook. And so she sent me this. This is a 28 count Angel Blush. It's a Lugana. Um, so it's a very pale, I don't know if you can see, it's a very pale pink. Maybe if I put some white, uh, white piece of paper behind it. Let's see if that helps. Maybe a little bit. Um, I wanted to kit up a pattern that I've had for a while. And, oh, I didn't print out the picture. It's from an old version of Cross Stitch Plus. It's from the September, October 2010 Cross Stitch Plus. It's this little um, C for cure, C is for cure. And, and I purchased a couple of, when I did my stash organization, I found I had um, pur purchased a couple of these. And I'm, I'm a breast cancer survivor, and I have a good friend um, who's also a breast cancer survivor, one of my colleagues at the college that I teach at here in the Rio Bandy Valley of Texas. And so I wanted to stitch that for her. So, um, so I went ahead and got the fabric. This will actually be enough for two. So I'll either stitch the other one for me or for someone else. And then, um, like I said, most of my stash enhancement or haul has been um, threads and it's kind of gone into different kits. So I didn't want to pull that all out again. Um, but the other haul that I got recently, not really within the last week, it was a couple weeks ago, is not something I purchased, but something my BFF, Susan, got for me. She's in this club from the flat quarter shop. And the design for the first shipment that she got was this thing here. Um, homegrown cross stitch pattern. It, and it's got a sunflower. And Susan knows that my favorite flower, sunflower. Well, actually, it's a toss-up between sunflowers and blue bonnets. But he loves sunflowers, and like I, I have a hard time resisting anything that has a sunflower in it. So she said she thought of me as soon as she saw this. So she kitted it up for me, and and um, even got me the little pouch and everything that came with it. Um, there's several. So it's a kit. And one of the things that also came in, in it, um, I believe either that or she bought one for me, which in either case, thank you so much, Susan. You know, I love you. Um, it's this um, cross stitch key that can help you find the proper edge of your fabric if you're not starting in the middle. Um, so I've used that a couple of times already. So it's not actually in the pouch anymore because I've been using it. And then the threads. Like sunflower colors. How happy are those? And and then she got me um, some linen. So the kit can be done in linen. And then it looks like, yeah, I'm sh I don't know if Fat Quarter Shop did this or Susan did this. I suspect Susan did it. But actually, zigzag the edges for me so they wouldn't fray because she knows I'm too lazy to do it myself. I often start things without without fixing the edges so there are no cross stitch police right i'm not going to get thrown in jail because i don't zigzag my edges and they fray um i think that's it so just over 30 minutes for my first floss tube a little longer than i was expecting i hope you enjoyed it um i'll put the the names of things when i get a chance i'll put the names of everything down below and um, I'm gonna try to do these weekly, like either Friday night or Saturday morning, um, if it looks like people are interested. I know my friends and family will call in and give me a thumbs up. But, um, hopefully uh, anybody new, anybody not related to me, <laughs> didn't already know me, you, that you enjoyed this. And um, probably a future episode will be a stash dive because I've got a lot of stuff in my stash and some of it's been there quite a while. Um, so it'd be kind of fun to, to share with folks because I've really enjoyed seeing other people's stash. So um, anyway, bye-bye. Uh,
and I hope you have a wonderful week. Um, I, I should actually, I do want to say one more thing. Um, you might be able to tell from my handle on Instagram and other places, Science Nitster. I'm a scientist. I alluded to teaching at a local college. I'm a biologist by training. I teach biology. And um, I don't want to get into a deep discussion of COVID and coronavirus and all that kind of stuff. There's lots of other places you can see that. But I did want to say one thing. Please, please, please check things out before you share them on social media. There is so much misinformation out there. Um, just recently, just this, a few days ago, there was a, a video going around by a couple of, I guess they're physicians. I only watched the first couple of minutes. They were giving out total misinformation about the human immune system. And, and I, um, I was like, I, this just doesn't sound right to me. Um, it, that's not my area of specialty within biology. So I wanted to check it out before I started telling my friends, you know, that are sharing this, you know, this is not the right information. But before I had a chance to check it out, experts in like emergency medical um, association, um, di different associations of emergency medical people um, put out a statement saying that, you know, what these physicians were saying was total hooey. It's not how the immune system works. And, um, you know, this is information that could potentially hurt someone, right? And there's been a lot of that in the last week or two, as you might have seen in the news. So please be careful before you share things. Please be careful before you, you actually follow any recommendations that you see on social media. Um, if you're not seeing the experts, people like Dr. Bricks, Dr. Fauci, American Medical Association, the CDC, the World Health Association. If you're not, if, if what you're seeing doesn't jive with what you see from those outlets, please check it out. Um, you know, use Snopes or, or some other mechanism to check it out because if it's way off from what the experts are saying, it it's probably wrong. And um, as a scientist, I think it is part of my job to to make sure that the information that is getting shared out there that's science-based is truly science-based that it's been vetted by experts um, this is how science works you know people publish their what they publish gets reviewed before it gets published and then it gets basically gets reviewed again after it's published by people in the field um, you know, they look at it and decide whether they agree with what the authors concluded or not. So just just be aware that there's a lot of false information out there and you need to check the sources of the information. It's one of the things I always do when I see something that's um, supposedly science-based, I check and see, okay, where's this coming from? And in the case of those doctors I was just talking about or physicians, whatever they were, emergency medical workers, um, they actually um, were, I believe, doctors that um, had had some skin in the game. They they were, their business was suffering because they did some kind, of, they owned some kind of emergent care and people were going to the hospital and said it to them or, or um, but anyway, you need to check your facts, make sure Make sure you're not spreading misinformation. Okay, didn't want to end on such a down note, but anyway, I felt like I needed to say something as a scientist. So um, next time, more stitching. I'm going to bring out some knitting probably. Oh, yeah, I'll just do that next time. There was some haul I had that was actually spinning related, so I spin also. Um, not lately, but I do spin. So um, I hope you have a wonderful week. Um, enjoy your crafty time, whether you're, you're off from work or you're having to um, work from home or you actually have to go into work. God bless you if you have to go into work, especially if you're working in the medical field or um, in a field like um, you work in a grocery store or other place where you're in contact with the public. Um, thank you for what you do so that the rest of us aren't suffering too much, right? The rest of us aren't. We're not. We can stay home. And um, anyway, 
Have a wonderful week and stay safe. Bye.